Welcome to another glorious episode of the Tom and Frenchie podcast. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> mm, can you smell that, guys? Can you smell that? Because we are cooking up a fresh episode and it smells like whatever Frenchie had for lunch. I had a burrito from Zambrero's, not sponsored. Oh, we're going to have the biggest episode of the day, guys. Strap what have we got coming in. up, French? We have got hat talk. Do you like hats? Do you not like hats? We're going to talk about them. We also talk about shoes. What's the best option? One shoe? Or two shoes, no shoes. <laughs> Who knows? We're going to talk about that. Tom, what else is coming up? Um, some stuff that's actually coming up, <laughs> not whatever the fuck Frenchie talked about. <laughs> We've got some great trending news. We're going to tell you how our first show went in Adelaide Ooh. on Frenchie's tour. We're going to go through our fuck segment. We've got a really big package we're going to open and hope that it's not a bomb. Yeah, I took it on the train, so <laughs> I feel like it would have been time to go off then if it was a bomb. I feel like that could be a plot for a movie. Anyway, guys, we got so much coming <laughs> <Steer>. up. <laughs> Starting off, someone finally sent in a song, so me and Frenchie didn't have to make an intro song. Ooh. Marilyn, I think her name Shout is. Shout out, Marilyn. We've got a. It's actually a lovely song. Yeah, let's let's give it a play and we'll talk you through it. Don't forget, you guys can send them in as well. So this is a funky beat. This is like such, something we would improv rap over. Yeah. Woo. One shoe, two shoe, three shoe, four. How many on my feet? A little more. Got a croc. Got a gator. Oh, ah. and Frenchy <laughs> They'll make you laugh at Beautiful. The tongue. Frenchie Podcast. It's got quite a nice voice. Mm. They'll make you laugh fast. Tom and Frenchie Podcast. It's time to listen <laughs> up. They're two funny guys. They'll definitely cheer you up. Tom I feel like I'm getting Frenchie hypnotized. Podcast. Yeah, this is a, yeah, it's hypnotic. Tom I, I want to join the Navy. I don't, I don't know why. Yeah, if you play this backwards, there's some crazy yeah. message. Um, okay. I feel like if you're in a haunted house, that could be the theme song. Or in like a sci-fi film, you go into a local bar and there's like an octopus woman singing. Yeah, singing that like it's like a Star, like a, Star Wars yeah, ripoff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Like a sexy octopus woman. <laughs> um, so we I, we heard this via our, our messenger. Tom put it through and he's like, this, we got six song for the podcast. And my first thought was, where's the insult? When is she going to insult us? But yeah, we're used to people just being <laughs> just really mean. Just being mean for no reason. So that was actually really nice. So thanks for sending that in. Other thing I want to focus on. Mm -hmm. How do you laugh fast? So where do you make people laugh fast? Can you give us an example? Like before the punchline, you're already like, this is funny. Or is it like two times the speed? Mm. <laughs> oh, oh gotcha. that's what I'm saying. Mm. Can you show me how to laugh fast? I'm not sure. I think, <laughs> I think our audience is going to have to show us. <laughs> oh my God. You're scaring the shit oh. out of my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Your dog's face scares the shit out of me. <laughs> Oh, it's got bulbous eyes. It's Look like, who's it's talking. Like looking in a mirror. That's why it scares me. Um, laugh oh, fast. Was Give me one fast laugh. <laughs> I don't know. That's all I got. <laughs> Guys, if you want to send in a track to get played on the show, um, just send it to us. Um, it doesn't need to be amazingly produced. It just needs to be hypnotic and uh, be satanic when you play it backwards. Before we get into our incredible Adelaide show, I've got a interesting hypothetical. Mm -hmm. Alex, you can help us out with that. Shout out to our producer, Alex, is here again. How you mm -hmm. going, mate? How's your weekend? He waited for you to have a large glass large of water gl before he talked to you. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> How's your weekend? Uh, pretty chilled out. Okay, uh, no more ketamine therapy parties? No, nah, no more ketamine therapy parties. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a hypothetical, guys. Mm. Um, your friend's giving you uh, a tip on a cool TV show to watch. <laughs> you watch three episodes. It fucking mm. sucks. Mm. How do you tell them, like... You're fucking wrong, cunt. Well, this is a funny <laughs> hypothetical because it's definitely aimed at me. But there's a thing online called uh, reviewers and there's also audience reviews and you're wrong. And I said that when I recommended the show. I said, you might not like it, but you surprised me because you like Mad Men, which is good. But normally you're watching like fucking, what are you watching? Like Riverdale and shit because you're a fucking 12 year old okay, child. Well, I want, what, have you heard of the show Succession? Uh, Alex. No, I haven't. What's it about? Well, Tom uh, told me to watch it. I think I told 
I think I mentioned it. And it here. did sound good. It's like about a rich family and they're trying to keep their wealth mm-hmm. and not and like do some things and power struggles and like, oh, that sounds good. Mm-hmm. Three episodes I gave it and it was painful. Tell me why. Because it sucked. That's not good feedback. <laughs> You'd be a not- terrible reviewer. I thought it just wasn't like interesting storylines the characters it was like and the music they do is like oh this is creepy is it it's just like it doesn't know what it wants to be is it a drama is it a comedy it's a drama is it didn't feel any dramatic beats see you've got terrible taste in everything look at your clothes yeah <laughs> yeah well these shrank in the wad in the dryer my 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 tracksuit pants so i didn't realize till i got on the train and they were like halfway up my ankle i was like oh i'm gonna get new tracksuit pants <laughs> so you admit you got terrible taste. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, that's that's uh what I want to talk about. What about you, Tom? What do you want to talk about? I thought we were gonna talk about Adelaide. Yeah, to Adelaide. <laughs> Take us through it, Tom. First tour. Yeah. First Tom's away on tour. Take us through it. First of all, we're getting ready for the big trip. We're like figuring out what we need. It's the first show of the run. Um, and then we get a message from Virgin saying mm. we need to COVID test 72 hours before the flight. And I reckon they sent it to us probably 48 hours before the flight. Well, what we didn't realize is what had just happened is the week of we were going, Adelaide got their first COVID cases in like a fucking year. Mm. Because even though they had opened up the borders, they still hadn't really had any cases. They they sort of they only recently kind of opened them as well, and then mm. yeah, they had a few Omicrons come in, the new variant, and and every day it got closer. They started freaking the fuck out, and so they're changing the rules each day of, and then two days before they're like, yeah, you need a test seventy two hours before. We're like. Fuck, it's 50 hours till our flight. What do you mean 72? Yeah, and I'm like, are we going to get results in time? And luckily we did, but it was stress. And then when we arrived, we also had to get COVID tested. When we arrived, we got <coughs> greeted at the airport by police. We mm. walked out the fucking, um, the gangplank, is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you like walk a the pirate plank. ship. You yeah. walk the plank on into the airport. Cops are there like, oh, this way, guys. And I just started clearing my hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Tom, is your, is your bracelet I still just, on? I your just ankle dipped, monitor? My, uh, dipped my whole laptop in the toilet. <laughs> he bleached his hard drive. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we went there and they kind of checked our shit. And then they're like, yeah, you've got to um, get a COVID test and isolate before that. And I was like. Fucking hell. Well, they told Tom to do that. They didn't tell us to do that. That's what was it. And so it was like, they said, you have to get a COVID test within 24 hours of being in Adelaide, but we're only going to fucking be there for 22 hours. (laughs) It made no fucking sense. But yeah, so we were like trying to figure it out because there was a walk-in clinic across the road, but you needed bookings. And we obviously didn't have booking because we didn't know we had to do this. And then the other options were all drive-through clinics and we didn't have a car. (laughs) So we (laughs) called up the center and we were like, can we walk through? And they were like, no, you can't walk through, but you can get an Uber. And Because originally I was like, surely you can't just book an Uber and get them to drive you through that because they're going to think you've got COVID. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're going to be like, why the fuck would you hop in my car if you got COVID? Yep. And that's exactly what happened. And, uh, and but well, I clarified. I was like, "Are you sure?" And yeah. and they were like, "Yeah, you can get an Uber or taxis because people who don't have transport have to be able to go through and get these tests." I go, "Oh, no worries. We book an Uber. We get in." <laughs> she just, this chick. She had uh, drawn on eyebrows, like tattooed eyebrows. That's all. That's all we noticed from us. And then Frenchie goes, <laughs> "Um, yeah, we need to go to the COVID drive-through and then we'll come back." And she goes. You can't use Uber for that. I'm like, yeah, we can. She's like, like, no, you can't. I'm Frenchie like, started getting aggressive early oh, as no, well. I'm like, early. Yeah, we can. She's like, no, you He's can't. He's like, yeah, I'm we like, can. Do you know better than the government? <laughs> he went full crackhead straight away. End. That was at the end. That of was it. pretty early, no, bro. No, I said, oh, we can do it. I actually <laughs> called up someone from the new, uh, from South there Australia There was more government. attitude than that. You were I was yelling. Like, I, I didn't yell. I was like, do, do you know ScoMo? <laughs> she was like, oh, excuse me. I don't understand. <laughs> She, no, because she whips it over to the side of the road. Goes, you need to get out. You can't do that. I'm like, no, we can do that. I rung up to double check. Yep. She's like, you have to get out. I was like, no, we don't have to get out. We're allowed to do it. I talk. Do you I know like- better than the South Australian government? Is that what you're saying? You know better than the experts. I feel like she never raised her voice. 
But you and your top manager, she fucking bit snappy. <laughs> she did. She never raised her she voice. She said, "Get out, you dirty boy." She said, "I'm boys. gonna have to cancel she said, the Get out, you dirty boy. And then boys. your tour manager as well grabbed all the Mentos, <laughs> and he goes, "I'm taking these fucking Mentos because you suck." <laughs> he did not. He did. Did he actually? Yeah. yeah but he didn't say that. No, he did. He didn't say because you suck. He said something like that. <laughs> Legit. <laughs> It was a whole thing. And then I was like, fuck, all right, maybe we just won't get a test. And then we asked a taxi driver and he was like, yeah. He didn't give a fuck. See, the taxi driver was like, yeah, no worries. Because they already have it. That's the thing about taxi drivers. <laughs> taxi driver was like, literally, like, no, no problem. Do you need to get an SDI test too? Whatever. I'll <laughs> yeah. fucking swab you. I'll swab you myself. But yeah, that was stress. But yeah, so we're a bit stressed before the show. We roll in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Fucking banging show. How would you feel yeah. in your... Was that the biggest show you've done, Tom? I don't think so. It was one of the biggest, for sure. Oh, okay. Big boy. Big boy. <laughs> it was one we of the biggest. We ended up getting, I reckon, about close to... It sold out to so about 370 people there. Yeah. So it, was, it was awesome. It was they were loose. There were some, some loose units around. Yeah, we got some good footage. We... um. We got a good guy in the front row. Oh. I can we can give you the snapshot and no, then, just say and then it. you'll They'll see. Still the, you'll the see footage. the video. So <laughs> I don't know how it came about. Essentially, he told me he was from Broad Meadows, which is like a rough, the rough area yeah. of Melbourne, but even though we're in Adelaide. Did he so travel, or he's just from he was there? just from there? Yeah, and yeah, he's moved yeah. to Adelaide, and I'm like, oh, there you go. That's why you got. Oh, and I'm like, he's pointing to the gap in his teeth, and it's like uh, because he's got a, missing a tooth. And he, and he lifts it down and the whole front of his teeth come down. So he's got false, he's, his whole top row. I'm like, no, you do not have false teeth. He's like, yeah, I do. <laughs> oh, before I'm talking to him about how he looks like the sort of guy to have a doomsday shelter. Yeah, yeah, yeah doomsday prep up. He did look shelter. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, you do not have false teeth. This is like two minutes in the show. I'm like, yo, can I see him? He throws them to me. Takes them out, throws them I up. I catch them, saliva all over my hand. I'm looking at him and everyone starts chanting. chanting Put him in, put him in. And I'm like very, and I'm very a, into peer pressure. I'm and like, while this is happening, I'm having a panic attack because I'm meant to come off and then film Frenchie's crowd work, but he went straight into crowd work and I couldn't find the fucking record button oh, on his yeah, camera because yeah, yeah, it's yeah. like the smallest button and it's on the crease of the mm. camera. And I'm fucking like, don't fucking do it yet. And I'm like don't running around. I'm like, wait, this is too good. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm thinking, so I'm flashing. I'm like, to my mind, I'm going, I actually don't care about putting some dude's false teeth in my mouth. Like it's mm. gross, but the You've done content worse. I would get from it. But then I realized two minutes into a show, I've got nowhere to go from there. <laughs> They're not even going to take me seriously as a comedian if I do that. <laughs> I'll save that for the end if my show starts bombing. I'll get yep. the false teeth back, put in 70, 80 minutes in. <laughs> anyway, I don't put him in. I'm like, no, you didn't pay enough, whatever. Then some guy starts yelling at me. He's like, bullshit, bullshit. I'm like, okay, you come do it, big boy. And it was literally what he was waiting for. Eight rows deep. He jumps up, climbs over people, f- jumps on stage, holds the false teeth in the air. Pops him in his mouth and everyone starts so cheering. Gross, and he's bro. showing everyone his double set of fucking chompers. Oh, so nasty, <laughs> but man. But the best part was he takes him out, throws him back to the old dude who just pops him back in his mouth. There doesn't no- wash him out. And this is why we're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we're in an Omnicron yeah, fucking bro. No cases wonder Adelaide's in Adelaide. getting cases. <laughs> Fucking hell. It was so funny, man. Oh, bro. And there was another dude who had this huge prison story. There was a guy who looked oh, like- Oh, um, yeah. This guy just- Yo, that part was the weirdest. Because I, I won't get that one out for a couple of months. So we'll tell you that one. Mm. He's He come here with his sister. I was like, oh, sister, can you tell us something embarrassing about old mate? He's like a 23-year-old sort of- sort And to of be thing. honest, when- he said it was his mum and his sister. I thought he was 15 because he looked I thought he young. was young too. That's me too. Like I yeah. thought he was young. I thought 19 or something. Um, I go, sister, what's an embarrassing story about him? <laughs> she goes, oh, well, when he was in jail, he once pretended to choke on a sausage roll to escape. And we're, everyone was like, what? I was we're- like, fucking back up. <laughs> how did we go I, go I was thinking a fun story About how he peed his pants Yeah it's, I was definitely it's Thinking like shit himself Yeah a little Oh he's growing up He got a boner At fucking Christmas You know what I mean Like Yeah What 
And then he went into this really detailed, oh, long story. About how he escaped jail. I'm like, you shouldn't be telling us this on camera, bro. They're going to yeah. find you. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> so stay tuned for those videos. <laughs> oh, and then good. Oh, happy end to this story. Um, just after the show, we got our COVID test back. And fortunately, we were positive, so we didn't have it. It was, <laughs> it was a positive result. result. Yeah, we, positive we result. gave high fives. And, positive uh, result. And we met uh, 400 fans. Do you think it means we got it positive or not? No, I think it's... Uh, oh, there you go. There you go. So that was our um, that was our nine Adelaide cars. We got Sydney this week, Wagga Wagga and Albury. Yes. Albury and Wagga will sell out, so get them quick if you want to come. Sydney's got about 150 left, so that might, that'll go either come way. Come along, come say sure. hi. We met like... Literally everyone who came almost on yeah, Adelaide I was had tell- a photo with everyone. I was telling Tom, um, you can tell how good a show you do by how long the line is afterwards. It was fucking it long. It was fucking long. How long did it take? Oh, it took us a couple of hours to get through. Yeah, bro. It takes a while. <laughs> yeah. It takes a while. The worst part was when I wasn't selling merch. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'd meet everyone, get a photo, have a chat. Like, wouldn't make any money from it. Yeah, yeah. I could have just gone home. Could have, <laughs> yeah. But now at least, like they're buying shirts and there stickers was, and stuff. There was for some kid we rent. drew abs on and then signed his stomach, and he said he was going to get it as a tattoo. Oh yeah. The the like responsible adult in me was like, please don't. He's get getting that. the abs as a tattoo, but he already had a tattoo coming down his stomach, so like it's not going to like. It, it'll look good. It was big though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My signature was not good. <laughs> <laughs> Funny man See the titties I signed No I miss that I miss yeah. that whole thing Yeah So sometimes Sometimes it's like a single girl But sometimes they come in With their boyfriend And she, and she's like Sign my titties uh, And I'm like Oh okay And then the boyfriend's there I'm like You cool He's like Yeah man Fucking do it man Get him out Whatever You <laughs> like, So weird I still don't know If like I should Like like sign him too much I did this, my signature on one She's like You gotta get the other one too I go okay And I just wrote Tom Armstrong on the other one <laughs> Stitch up <laughs> You should do like Finger paint for those ones Like have the ink And then just No? Okay Yeah No I think so <laughs> they, were, they were really good titties Were they? Yeah Congratulations Well she's going to She goes Can you grab him? I'm like Oh no I don't think I should She's like Come on I need someone to masturbate over later Oh my Swear. god! I go only if I can grab your boyfriend's dick at the same time. She goes, "Yeah, I think so." <laughs> bit for you, a bit for her. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh man! All right, guys, if you want to come along and get your girlfriend's tits grabbed by a Frenchy, uh, <laughs> Sydney Albury and Wagga this week, uh, that's going to be fun. Should we do right. some news? Let's do it. Tom and Finch's Trending News. Oh, oh my. my. I really like that stare. Oh my. <laughs> All right. Uh, first article I have is Bomb Squad called to remove mortar shell from man's rectum. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking what? <laughs> How embarrassing! <laughs> that is the best. Oh. Yo, that could be just be a that could just be a one liner at our yeah, Sydney yeah. show. Just go up and open with that, Tom. <laughs> I reckon that'd do pretty well. <laughs> Tom, uh, Tom Squad, uh, tell us the story. Um, troops from Eleven Explosive Ordnance Disposable Disposal Regiment rushed to the Gloucester Hospital after being notified by the police that a patient had presented with a munition in his rectum. <laughs> The man was a military enthusiast who found the shell yeah, while clearing out, but somehow tripped and fell onto it. Mm. That does happen. No, <laughs> that does happen. What do you mean? <laughs> you trip, you fall, you you're naked, are down, your you're naked, your asshole's pre lubed. Yeah. yeah, okay. It happens. How embarrassing. <laughs> well, it's, it's embarrassing saying you tripped and fell. Yeah. Get a better excuse and this he really was an enthusiast though wasn't he he was mm, yeah he could be I'd go on the extra mile he could be really unco dude but let's say hypothetically tom mm. mortar shell up your bum mm. what's your excuse you gotta go to hospital you don't want to say i'd go the terrorist route i'd be like a terrorist <laughs> pinned me down and he tried to turn me into a weapon of master <laughs> that's good yeah that's good because I've like that's hot. Like I've seen plots like that. Yeah, shed some on like tears, Homeland and yeah. all that sort of show, shows. Hide the cummy undies and then um, what? We would have came putting yeah, it up yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. But oh, but also if you don't hide them, you'd be like, yeah, I came as he was doing it. 
I'm a World War Two enthusiast. Yeah. yeah, enthusiast is a good word. Mm. How did he get it out? Oh, uh, sorry, keep going. Yeah, I suppose the uh, the hospital did that, but I think with any kind of thing to do with live munition, they have to call a bomb squad. That's so embarrassing. I mean, surely. I'd love to get someone from emergency onto the podcast. Mm. If you're a listener and you're in a ner- you're a nurse or something, oh. hit us up because I'm sure there's people with f- that are tripping and falling on a lot of stuff. Good I'm, call. Yeah, I've actually got a mate who's got the most fucked stories. I'll see if he'll come on anonymous and tell us about him. Like really fucked from working in a um, ER. hospital. Yeah, damn, that's cool. Yeah, that'd be funny. Can you remember anything that he said? I just don't know if he'll want me to repeat it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll check. I'll check and come back next week. Nurse, patient, confidentiality. Wow. How come they never talk about that one? The nurse, patient? Yeah, surely. Mm. It, nurse, patient, confidentiality is a thing, yeah? Sure. We only ever hear doctor, patient, confidentiality. Yeah. But I feel like nurses have seen me at a way more vulnerable yeah. time. And mm. the worst things, like clean that up. Well, when I had like- my hernia. Oh, yo, remember when I had the my fucking ball hernia? Mm. Um, you, I don't know if you know about this, Alex. So anyway, I had the ball hernia one day and they had to fucking operate on or whatever. And, and, and I'm lying in hospital and the fucking doctor come around with their little interns and come to check it out. Oh, like they were no. teaching them about it. Oh, and I was no. just like fucked up. And they're like, yeah, so what have we got here? And like, I'm just like, oh, Frenchie, I love you your care? work. And they're just squeezing your <laughs> And they literally nut. lifted up my fucking hospital <laughs> gown and fucking the blankets and they just fucking looked. Get she was like poking flick. it. Yeah, like, and all the fucking interns looking at it. That's like, hilarious. Fucked. That's funny. And I was like, I hope there's intern fucking patient confidentiality. <laughs> yeah, true. Hope that you should I guess that every job should have uh, employer employee confidentiality. I think a lot of them, it's worked into the contracts. You apart just from d- apart from Alex's contract, which doesn't exist. <laughs> oh, yeah. it's in blood. Alex says <laughs> confidentiality. Do we? Have, does he have a confidentiality? No, I'm saying he's got nothing. Mm. Mm. So, he, can so just- he can talk about what you do to him. You were here alone with him before I got here, Tom. So yeah, and he's got a World War Two <laughs> relic up his ass right now. <laughs> I think that's a plot of succession, Tom. That's, <laughs> that's I would watch that I'd if watch it was. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that is. You guys want another? Right, where was he from? Uh, Gloucester. Gloucester, Gloucestershire. So I'm guessing in England. England. Must be England. Yeah, they oh, have a lot of relics over there. Good on you, England. Yeah. No, but I just never thought like. When you think English, you don't think like like adventurous sort of sex. I don't think that. I would think that would be a Russian thing. Do you know what I mean? They're bored. Yeah. He's bored. He's, he's on the farm. He's found a shell from the war. Where's England? You, he's going to an antique store to find that or something. I have seen embarrassing bodies and there's some shit oh, true, going on. True. No, you, shit. You're, I'm wrong. You're right, Tom. <laughs> All right, next kinky one. English. You're kinky English. Good on you. Um, we have... Uh, billionaire Gina Reinhardt says super yacht mooring is sadly lacking in Australia. Super. Nah. What's mooring mean? I uh, uh, just know where to put a super yacht. I pretty much can <laughs> guess this story. But yo, <laughs> Gina is- Reinhardt is an interesting one. Would you become her mistress? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think we all would. She's there's, very rich. There's this horrible looking level of fame and level also of money is that if you had the opportunity, you would sleep with them because. Mm. You respect their fame and or money. Mm. What's the level of money? Like billionaire, Gina Reinhart, yeah. Yeah. Is she a billionaire? Yeah, yeah, richest woman. I think the richest Australian. Well done. So, I'm saying, whereas level of fame, I think like, and I was thinking about this the other day, level of fame for me to just sleep them because they're famous, if I was single, um, local politician. Because I was looking at all the ones on the Because the, the, the election was on Saturday I was looking at all the ones on the board I was like right. If any of those Was at like the bar I was like Yo you almost voted for me I'd be like Yo I almost did You fucking famous bitch They're like Oh you, if you root me There's perks Like you get a park I don't even bench. need the perks The park perks is I get to tell people That's the perk Okay so what, Do you remember any of their names? No No because no one does No one cares <laughs> It would have to be an election week. It wouldn't be like a year later. Bro, how fast was that election? I'm going to have to pay the fine because I didn't know it was coming and then I missed it. No, just say you're in Adelaide. That's what I'm going to do. Oh, I was in Adelaide. (laughs) No, so I'm saying what level of fame and money would they have to be for you to be like, oh, not really my type. Higher than local. (laughs) So state or not even politician. Like Pauline Hanson, (laughs) terrible person, but hilarious to say. Exactly, man. Imagine that story. 
<sighs> oh, you'd have to though. I would, especially for the. What bit if you I could do? fuck the racism out of her? True. <laughs> True. She'd be like, "It's not just Chinese people with tiny penises." <laughs> <laughs> You've opened my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do the world some good Maybe man. you're right You yeah. could do the world some yeah. good uh, You're onto something <laughs> <laughs> Yeah right. next story I don't uh, uh, uh. That's pretty much all There is to that one yeah, um, That's what I figured uh, Australia is the drunkest country in the world Yeah I want to hear about this So I've got a, a list of the drunkest countries They did a survey yes, love An international that. survey uh, Where Australians drank to the point of drunkenness An average of 27 times a year which is almost double the global average of 15. Wow. I believe that because I can see it in myself. Well, if yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What, what don't you know? I don't know. <laughs> you don't believe it? I know we get drunk a lot for sure, but like UK, man, they drink a lot too. You got to think, I guess Russians don't really get drunk because they're Russian. They drink vodka, but it doesn't affect them. I feel like they drink more regularly. Mm-hmm. But they might not drink to get drunk like us because we um, only drink to get drunk a lot of the time. Yeah. Yep. Like yeah. that's like a part of the thing. Like you don't, it's not about casual, it's about getting fucking lit. Like UK too, sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They got a big pub culture too. So we're number one. Who's number mm-hmm. two? Like, we'll take yeah. it, both. So Suck a dick, everyone else. <laughs> it's Australia, uh, number one. Uh, second is Denmark. Denmark. How many times a year? Uh, I doesn't say. So realistically, Tom, <laughs> how many times a year are you drunk? And Alex, I'd like to know yours too. Because are you helping the average? Are you helping us stay number one or are you hurting us? I it's a good question. I feel like back in the day it was every weekend. <laughs> yeah. Like when I was younger. But yeah, now I'm older. Thursday to Sunday. Bah. Now I'm older, maybe once Wednesday. a fortnight or more. Once or a fortnight. Less. So you're doing 26. Yeah. Just under, still. Mm. Mm. What What would you do? You'd think close to every, like one day of the weekend, I would think. Mm. So I think 50, two? <laughs> no, realistically. One, once a one week? day, you'd think. I feel like you go one through One day a of lot the of weekend, f- like Friday or a Saturday, and then the weekends you don't, you'd probably have a double later on. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Once a Catch week. Up. Once a week, you think? I think so. I feel like you're always on like a... Uh, like oh, I'm not drinking at the moment. Yeah, I'm try. I try. I tried not to before the tour. I didn't drink for a whole week and a That's half. Good. <laughs> Sounds pretty good. Hmm. But you're like a social person, and I always feel like you're always doing something. Someone's mm. always asking you to do something. Yeah, because like it, do a shoey. Yeah. It's a lot of activities. They started yelling that early the other night. <laughs> oh, they did multiple times. Just relax, bro. <laughs> You'll get your fucking chewy. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up, just, the stage ended up being like a rap concert because I was like, I was mucking around with a few different people in the crowd and I was like, oh, one, two, three, four, you guys were the stars of the show. Do you want to come up, me and Tom, and do a shoey? And so they're like, yeah, come up. Then all these randos come up too. Then I've been like, 16 people on the stage and you're like throw us a shoe so we don't have to use our shoes but someone threw me i was catching like five shoes they yeah, just kept coming. get ready for that <laughs> i got a video i don't know if i should drop it when it's from the perf show where someone sconed me in the head oh really? it went from my microphone into my head so oh. it sounded sick like a that's good yeah, i'm like use that would go viral but also would encourage people for headshots mm. funny <laughs> funny <laughs> Get him in the head. Uh, no. <laughs> yeah, was it was a story? Uh, just we get oh, yeah. drunk. So yeah, you were oh, right. Yeah. The French don't get as drunk as us, but they drink more like three yeah. times a week. Yeah. But I, I, what I wonder is here is how do they measure the drunkenness? Like, what are they to the blacking out, or is it yeah. just like like maybe it's a blood alcohol content? I think it's till you message your ex. They <laughs> <laughs> check your phone. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> they check your they check your Instagram stories. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If you're uh singing out a key on um, the wrong mm. words. You know what I mean? There's certain stories you only post when you're drunk. Oh, do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. What's I'm trying to think like Denmark doesn't seem like it'd be up there mm. to me. After us, Denmark. Oh, but Ma- Princess Mary's there. Oh, okay. So she's from Australia. She must have infected them. Go, this is how you really fucking drink Danes. Yeah, yeah. right. You want to call yourself a great Dane? <laughs> That's a dog. <laughs> That's a dog. <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. I like it. All right, who was number three? Uh, Finland. 
Yeah, oh, that's yeah. weird, didn't we? They drink oh, a lot of vodka. Oh, nothing to do up there, I guess. And it's dark and depressing. Yeah. What, four and five? Uh, then we've got four and five is the US, then the UK, mm, yeah. then Canada, Ireland, France, and Sweden. Well, I feel like yeah. Ireland should be up there as well. Well, Ireland's got the rep. Ireland's got, yeah. the, mm. got the rep. But US, it shocks me how big their pores are. So, like, if you get a shot over there, it's in, like, a water glass. It is probably three shots, I reckon. And, like, if you get a mixed drink, it's, like, three shots and a bit of Coke. Like, it's fun. Yeah, they free pour. They, they it's, like, yeah. so much. Like, I remember being, like, I'm going to black out, and I did. Like, it's that kind of vibe. Yeah, they're fucking wild. Yeah. 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 Manscaped. It's holiday season, and that means there are stockings to be stuffed and elves to be cuffed. Well, today's sponsor, Manscaped, has gone global with the tools to guarantee you will score under the tree and the mistletoe. Ooh, Manscaped is the leader in men's below-the-waist grooming, and they have served more than 4 million men worldwide. That's more than Mia Khalifa. If my math is correct, that's almost 8 million balls. Get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with the code Tom Frenchy. Ho, 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 gents. Naughty or nice, tis the season to perform if you want to. I uh, love Manscaped. Yeah, maybe chuck a uh, groom, what are they called? A grooming device? No, that's something else. Whoa, Tom. <laughs> yes. Well, lock up those is. elves. <laughs> <laughs> uh, would you like to get Manscaped for Christmas, Tom? Well, I've already got one, but I think I would like to give Manscaped for mm, Christmas. I would like to get it or give it. I don't care. I'm, mm, top I'm, or I'm, I'm a both. Yeah, yeah. I'm You're rare versatile. in the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I think my uncles, I could get one for them. Maybe Tonya's dad. I don't know. Maybe her brothers. Like a nice little ball trimming gift. That's not weird, is it? No. no Manscaped best-selling product is the Performance Package 4.0, which is at the top of every man's wish list this year. Inside, you'll find their Lawnmower Body Trimmer, the best trimmer on the market for your balls, butt, and body, and the Weed Whacker, ear and nose hair trimmer. Let's not forget their famous liquid formulations. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't forget them. <laughs> crop preserver, ball deodorant, mm. and crop reviver ball toners that have maximized your ball hygiene routine. Make sure you hurry to their site to ensure these wild gifts show up before the holiday season. And while you're at it, get 20% off plus free shipping at manscaped.com with code Tom Frenchy. Tom Frenchy, that's it. Whether this is for your partner, dad, brother, friend, dogs, giraffes, get them something they will actually use and it's almost sure to get a laugh. Get 20% <laughs> off and free shipping at manscaped.com with the code Tom Frenchy. Be the ballsiest gift giver this year with Manscaped. Manscaped. Frenchy, didn't you have some photos from your trip? Oh, good idea, yeah. So I meant to talk about this uh, when we came back, when I came back from America, guys. When I went to the Australian restaurant, uh, Outback, Outback Steakhouse. Steakhouse. You know we got it here. In Tampa Bay. Yes, mm. I know. But what's more Australian than going to an Australian restaurant mm. in Tampa? Yeah, but I think it originated over there, right? And Definitely. they've just brought it here. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I fucking lolled at everything on the menu. I took a photo of every page <laughs> and um, we're going to read out some iconic Australian dishes mm -hmm. from each uh, each page of the menu, guys. So, from the cocktail menu, you can see, Tom, they put a boomerang next to the very Australian ones. That's good. <laughs> Otherwise, you wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The very Australian one from the cocktail menu is called the Wallaby Darned, which is a frosty combination of peaches, La Masa Prosecco, Svedka Vodka, very Australian vodka, <laughs> And the Cooper peach tree schnapps. Try it Aussie style at a float of Prosecco. That's so <laughs> random. It's like sounds more Italian than fucking Australian. And they've got the Aussie rum punch. <laughs> not with Bundy. How's it not with Bundy? It's with I Bacardi love that it's rum. It's called a punch with the reputation of rum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's got Bacardi rum. Oh, Malibu. <laughs> That's not tough. You're not punching anyone after a Malibu. No, you're kissing them. <laughs> you're kissing them. Just like a long peck. Like, mm, yeah. Just the boys just kissing just the boys. Just the boys kissing each other, yeah. yeah. Um, and cranberry juice. Okay, you can find the most Aussie ones on this. All right. We'll go pick for pick, Tom. Steak and mate combos. Sirloin and choice of shrimp. If there's not any good ones on that, you can go to the next. 
Filet, yeah, they're not very yeah, good. Fun. Yeah, yeah, these have got the good ones. Okay, so we've got... They all look pretty normal. Oh, yeah. Alice Springs Chicken. It's got a boomerang next to it. Grilled chicken breast topped with sautéed mushroom, crisp bacon, melted Monterey Jack and cheddar. Honey mustard. That's so random. They just like pick a random city in Australia and then they'll tell you like Alice yeah. Springs Chicken. Look at look at that one. Toowoomba Salmon. <laughs> Toowoomba the inland, Salmon. The inland town of <laughs> Toowoomba. Uh, grilled salmon topped with seasoned and sautéed shrimp tossed with mushrooms in it. They love chucking mushrooms into everything. Did we really not talk about this? No, bro. You did it on your story. I oh, told okay. you. I'm getting flashbacks. <laughs> You're tripping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so it, random. Bro. New uh, bloomin' fried chicken sandwich. Do we say bloomin'? No. Or maybe like, we used to. Bloomin'. Where's my... Where the bloomin' hell are ya? Sweet Chuko Mine. Is that like Sweet Child of Mine? That's not an Australian <laughs> brand. A band, sorry. Sweet Chuko Mine. Bah, 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 bah. The Outbacker Burger. Mm, the Bloomin' Burger. Yeah. I'm thinking. So funny. I'm thinking what we do, Tom. Chocolate Thunder from Down Under. I like that one, that's, actually. That sounds like this. New some, York style uh, cheesecake. They didn't even try there. That sounds like there's some tan <laughs> strippers, the Chocolate Thunder from Down Under. <laughs> Um, I'm thinking what we do, since this is so successful, we do our own American-themed restaurant. Okay, I like that. Mm. So we will call it, uh, what's the American Outback? Um, the Freedom Hotel. Midwest Freedom <laughs> Hotel. Okay, the Midwest Freedom um, Steakhouse. Yep. Midwest Freedom Steakhouse Stars and Stripes. Nice. Um, hashtag Morocco. Yep. Um, and then we just pick random towns. Random American things yep. put it on the menu, like the shotgun salad, <laughs> delicious. But then we make it like the the like most pathetic salad ever, just lettuce and like um, <laughs> <laughs> just lettuce, just lettuce. Yep, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, maybe like the um, for the troops. For tiramisu. The troops tiramisu. They love like Yo, that's they love the good. troops over there. For the troops tiramisu, freedom fish burger. Yeah, yep. <laughs> I like that. Um, Mississippi mud cake. Boom. Yep. That even sounds real. Is that a thing? I think jo- the the Joe Biden balaclava. Baklava. Nice. <laughs> Not an American dish at all. Obama orange spritz. It's a drink. <laughs> uh, Donald Trump's uh, waffle fries. Nice. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, um, school shooting steak and chips. Okay, <laughs> yeah, okay nice. someone went there. <laughs> school like shooting that. steak and chips. That's good. Um, cactus. Uh, <laughs> cactus cut. It's a certain piece of the meat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got there. Any other stories, Alex? <laughs> um, I got two more. Uh, oh, actually, if you're on your phone, um, mm-hmm. go to the article because i got a video. It's Man Breaks World Record Burps Louder Than Electric Drill. I think, I think Frenchie did I that think at I the start did. of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> All right, where is it? I, just I think I'm actually linked up. So, yeah, so we got Neville Sharp from Darwin broke Darwin. a record. Oh, Australian. Yeah, shout Robert. out Darwin. Uh, broke the record for the loudest burp registered at 112.4 decibels. Oh, he looks like a loud. Look at him. Oh, wow, well, that's a yeah, man who can like burp. you'd like to have a beer with him. It's a you man who can burp. Do you so the, the TikTok? Play the yep. TikTok. Do you reckon the beard helps? Oh, yeah. 112.4 decibels. Yeah. 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 Why did you put the other music over the top? We just wanted... Pu- I'm a burp purist. I just oh, wanted... Pu- right. Sound like we're at a carnival. Yeah, I like that. It was uh, like He's a freak machine. show. <laughs> He's a freak show. That was impressive. That was like a, 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 a frog combined with a car horn. Mm. <sighs> yeah. That was good. Mm. Good on him. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Shout out to Neville Sharp. Neville Sharp. Neville. He's sharp, all right. What else we got? Um, I got another story. I saw a couple of stories. There must be some bad uh, snow um, in the Northern Hemisphere because there were some people in the Northern England that were snowed in at a pub. Oh, that's not the worst place. Yeah. Imagine getting snowed in at like Centrelink or something. What's yeah. the worst place to get snowed in at? 
Like a family dinner. <laughs> That'd be all right. <laughs> I think the post office would be weird. Oh, yeah. There's always freaks at a post yeah, office. Yeah, there is. But they do have some weird knickknacks you could at least look at to pass the time. They've got like weird books and like fucking shit you'd see on like... um Like Danos Direct. Danos like, Direct. Yeah, that's true, actually. Fuck. They post got the weirdest got the shit. Most random shit. And you could open up other people's posts. Yeah, that's cool. cool. Okay, I'm starting to get someone, around the post office. Yeah, someone There's might no, have got to send a shovel. Yo, because if you got nothing to eat or drink, you'd be opening parcels going, yeah. yo, we need some drink. Yeah, yeah. Then you might get the Aussie rum punch and you're like, oh, finally some fucking Kalua. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Um, do you have the Seth Rogen article in there? Uh, no, but I can get it up. Yeah, get that up because I put that, that, I found that hilarious. I didn't read it. I just saw the um, title. Yeah, well, it was like, I was read, I was like, oh, maybe they did hijack his reviews. Um, so, what's the movie he's done? Do you want to... He's done another Christmas movie. So, I'm just doing this based on, on what I read when I was... I posted this in the chat. Seth Rogen's done another Christmas movie. And I'm pretty sure it's about maybe a female Santa Claus or something. Santa Inc. So, it's like a um, 3D, oh, it's animated. 3D animated film. It looks quite Anyway, cool. it got smashed in the reviews and Steph, Seth, <laughs> Steph, Seth Rogan's had a whinge going, oh, was a right-wing trolls hijacked the review. I think it was white supremacists. White supremacists. Yeah, yeah, didn't even go right-wing. White supremacists hijacked the movie, the reviews, because apparently they don't want this cartoon claymation movie Is it like getting out. Yeah, weird. Is it like pro that type of stuff? No, it's just a shit movie. I'm pretty sure it's just a shit movie. Mm. And because um, what in the article I sent you, I sent you guys a screenshot, all the like professional re- reviewers smashed it too. Yeah, right. But you don't listen to them because you hate succession. <laughs> did, did it actually get good reviews? Yeah, bro. It's like a really highly clever. But I show. said, how many sh- episodes do I need to give it? And you said, what did you say? 48 or something. Because it was a fucking little dig of a comment. No, I gave it three and I was like, I'm not hooked yet. When do I get hooked? And that's well, a good obviously question. you just don't like it. Some No, some shows you take longer to get hooked. And when you get hooked, you're like, yo, I'm glad I gave it three seasons. <laughs> like Breaking Bad. I don't bad. Know, man. You're just going to whinge more if I tell you to watch more. <laughs> All right, tell us this story. Did did it come up? Oh, yeah, you pretty much got it. So his movie Santa Inc. Mm. And uh, he's, one of the reviewers says, uh, in elevating itself above its subject matter, Santa Inc. ends up feeling dour and heavy, a televised lump of coal. Oh, wow. Brutal. Yeah, but Seth Rogen's claim white supremacist hijacked it because... Oh, yeah. Do you want me to read that one? Yeah, so pretty much like, just take the L, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like... It seems like a broad statement to make if it's not a bit true. <laughs> it seems like a crazy But why thing. would they hate a little cartoon movie? I'm sure it must have some kind of um, messaging behind it that's uh, uh, Of course. What do you mean? <laughs> well, other reviewers didn't like it either. Yeah. Mm. But there must be some kind of um, Black Lives Matter comment or something in it that they've taken offence to. Well, the whole thing is about it's Sarah Silverman is an elf mm. yeah. and she wants to... Sec- Succession. She wants to succeed. <laughs> <Santa>. <laughs> so for and become the first female Santa. Right. But it, it's just like it's just like they're shoving. Yeah. The it, ad- the messaging's too. Yeah. Too obvious. Yeah. yeah. Like it's satire good. can be funny. Like think Team America. And like even Sausage Party. They that was their last animated thing. That was funny. So that was good for a bit, and then it got a bit dry. Yeah. Sarah Silverman's usually good though. Which is funny. Yeah, they're yeah. both good, man. They're both yeah. super funny. It's just, I don't know what will happen with this one. There's a lot of people involved in film. Are we going to get some good Christmas movies? Fuck, I watched the shittest Christmas movie. It's like the new one on Netflix. It's got um uh, this Asian actor who's from Silicon Valley. And he's funny in that, but fuck, it sucked. No. It's like a romance. It's called like Love Heart, I think. And they were like... He likes Love Actually. She likes Die Hard. <laughs> oh, it's no. called Love Hard. And like the premise <laughs> the premise is this Asian guy catfishes this hot chick as um, a different guy 
And then she comes to Christmas. Oh my goodness. And it's honestly, it was like written by BuzzFeed article. Like oh that's the goodness. energy. And I was oh. like, wow, this is so shit. Bro, watch that um, The Rock movie with Ryan Reynolds. That was worse than Free Guy, bro. <laughs> I promise, oh, I promise no. you that was worse than Free Guy. Uh, they were about the same level, weren't they? You didn't finish Free Guy. I, at I least think, the end came together I think a bit. white supremacists got a hold of that plot. <laughs> <laughs> bro, that shit sucked. Didn't it? Oh. Didn't it? They tried to do like a spy heist, like a no, sorry, like a heist movie, like a stealing Ocean's Eleven type thing yeah, with the National Rock, Treasure, kind Ryan of. Reynolds. Um, who's oh, the chicken in? Um, Wonder Gal Woman, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, and it just was wow. It's like yeah. they wrote it as they went along. It was so bad. It's all about TV shows now. You watch movies and they rarely hit. Streaming services still can't do a good movie. I wonder what it is. They don't spend enough on them. Mm, must be. They, they pump them out within a couple of weeks. That's why they get all the big name actors. Yeah. They're like, you look, you're getting two you're million sell. bucks. We'll film it in a fucking month. And like we said, that was like number one or whatever. That was yeah, number one and it's so shit. Mm, they control their own Yeah, exactly. They just they? keep it on. <laughs> but they keep it on the main page. So people are like, well, it must be good, you know. It's number one. Yeah, and then everyone watches it and they're like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Need a more false teeth. That was my, mm, that true. Was my recommendation. <laughs> uh, do we want to rock into some fan oh, questions? See yeah. what you did there. Rock into it. Oh, Rock into it. Can yeah, let's it? do it. Tom and French's fan submissions. Submit your own audio message to at Tom and Frenchy on Instagram. <laughs> Brilliant. So we'd like to welcome to the new members. We've got Wade Darcy. Welcome. Thank you for what joining up, us. Wade Oss. Brody Raymond Bond. Ooh, that's a cool that's name. That's a good name. Yeah, yeah. Like Raymond Bond. And Tyson Clark. Ooh, Tyson. He's um actually just up the last guy as the highest contributing member because he did fifty dollars and fifty cents. Oh just to be a dick, I think. Just to, number just to one. knock down OG Tom. Tyson did that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so, wow, someone's going to up him with $50.69. I, I can see that happening. Yep, so, yep. But shout out Tyson, who's in the number one spot on yeah, the Patreon. Thank you. And guys, we've just announced the Patreon Christmas party, so we won't say where it is, but if you want to join, there's still time to come. It's going to be Saturday week Saturday in 18th. Sydney somewhere. Yep. In Sydney somewhere. So there will be a dress-up theme. Mm-hmm. If we can't think of a good one, I'll be a priest again. I'm, <laughs> I have a feeling that may just happen. It'd what if you just all be priests? I think we do need to dress up. We could do a Christmas theme. Yeah, Christmas theme could work. Nah, it's a bit lame. It's a bit lame. What's the opposite? Let's do devil what? theme. <laughs> <laughs> Seth <laughs> Rogen, <laughs> blame Seth Rogen. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> let's all dress up as COVID patients. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. New Zealand calling. New Zealand's calling you. That's a flex. Hey, yeah. bro. Hello. Hey, bro. What does the country? Do you want me to Sina? answer? Yeah, you got to answer. All right. We can all talk. Hello? Sorry, one sec. Hello? Hi, Tom. Hi, who's this? Hello. Hi, good day. This is Kurt from Blackbird Advisors. Firstly, apologies for the unannounced call today. That your details came through to me by Comstock and Saga survey that was late last year, and this is regarded market opportunities. Unfortunately, Tom, we didn't have anything back then that required your attention, but we certainly do now. And we are very fortunate to be one of the few financial institutions involved in the upcoming Impossible Foods IPO. So, have you heard of this huge alternative food company? Bro, can you put some uh, definition in your voice? You sound like a robot. <laughs> I can't believe that was all it took to make him was hang that up. A real person. I thought it was a voice recording. I thought so too. I thought it was a voice recording. I think it was a real person, but it was definitely a scam call. Fuck. I get so many fucking scam calls at the moment. That bloke obviously hasn't done any open mics. One heckle and he's out. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, Yo, he I got get scared. Whenever I get scam calls, I um. I um I always do weird shit. That's so funny. always sometimes I'll be like stay on the line, I'm enjoying it, like shit like that. Like <laughs> all this all but the work like on fuck, what what night will we get back? Saturday night, real late buzz to the apartment with my girlfriend. She's like, Who's that? I'm like, I don't fucking know who's that? She's like, 
I didn't order anything. Yeah, yeah. Like eight eight o'clock p.m. or something. Eight o'clock p.m. <laughs> and so I just do this. Hello, who is that? Like I always do. Like, a do you scare- have a video or no? Uh, no, nah, no video. Oh, I do fuck. a scary voice so that way it's like you yeah. got the wrong apartment. Yeah, yeah. How are you going? What do you want? <laughs> I don't think you need to put on a voice, bro. No, I do I need to do a voice. I'm naturally a very uh, charming, lovely voice. And what do you want? How you going? Whatever. It was a delivery for a package. Oh, no. <laughs> so, oh, delivery. I'm like, no, I don't think at this time of night, mate. I was oh, yes, it's for... It says my girlfriend's name. I'm like, no. Oh, that's I'm so like, oh, yeah. I'll send her down. <laughs> I'm that's trying to be a big, scary, tough guy. Fuck. That's a good thing here. At least I can see them. Yeah, no, we don't. Especially in like the city and Surrey Hills and Darlinghurst. There's so many fucking randoms around. You never know. Mm. Yeah, do you have guys have any issues with people nicking like your packages? We've been lucky here. We haven't had any, but um, yeah, I think like the postman is really good and he comes in and drops them in the lobby. Uh-huh. Imagine if they stole my package when I was getting all the cardboard cutouts. <laughs> no, like this one looks like it's some art. So funny. It's a big square folded up thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's ScoMo's fucking like, what the face. fuck is this? <laughs> no, nah, I've been lucky. That's, um, I like those pranks though. Like you see them on YouTube where they'll, they'll leave the package and it'll be like a glitter bomb or something. Yeah, I love that. And they'll that take shit. it home. And Seems like a real fucking problem in the States. Like yeah. the amount of TikToks I've seen about people stealing their, people's packages. Mm. It's fucked up. What's next on the agenda? Oh, oh we so got more got questions. questions. Let's do so it. this is from OG Tom. Mm. Uh, this one, <laughs> first question is for Frenchie. Uh, I saw this. How do you stand Tom? <laughs> Seems like a bit of a loaded question. Yeah, in which aspect? Because it it's d- definitely, didn't say. Well, just the know. broad stroke of me as a person. Well, his cut off leopard print um, shorts. Yeah, they're a bit much. Uh, I stand they? them by just focusing on what's underneath. I like mm. them, bro. It's a little. What about the fire socks? Yeah, they're, well, they're, they're obviously mm. fire, but like the shorts are like. Whenever I say leopard print, I think proper cougar. Yeah, like, like an old only, woman. Yeah, like a hot forty-eight year yeah, old. Yeah, yeah. Like they're the only women who can get away wearing leopard print. Forty-eight year old, sort of mama's. Four. And me, obviously. And Tom. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I, I guess I stand Tom. Stand. This makes me feel better about myself looking at him. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> what do you think his hat says, Alex? The peoples. <laughs> See, there's no gap between verses. Oh, no. There's no gap between verses. On. He thinks it's the people verses. Well, that's guys. the brand. That's the brand. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's there we go. Good. And what did your hat say? It says... Uh, Florida. It's better in Florida. Yeah, it is better. Think about it. <laughs> you got a lot of American rap and you got Indiana shirt. Yeah, I don't know if you know I was over there. Wow. Some of us travel. And I got my Carol Baskin shorts on. So <laughs> we're all Oh, yeah. Tiger King 2 came out. I haven't watched it yet. I, I saw one bad review and I was like, uh, I won't rush to it. But I still, I'm curious. Have you watched it? How many episodes do you reckon we need to give it? <laughs> You're really on the reviews, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say Are you that. the guy that looks up the reviews like, for food? And if it's not good, like... A hundred percent. Food's one thing. I agree with that. Like, you need to get a vibe for it. Like if also empty restaurants, I'll take that as a sign. Yeah, it's probably nah. not good. No, nah, that means you're going to get a space quicker. It's good. Mm-mm. I like the empty You get a space ones. quicker, but the food will be shit. The people know. The people first. Mm-hmm. But reviews can be bought. You do know. Ron Tomatoes is fake now. Let's start off really I don't. Accurate. I don't trust one thing. I'll usually go like Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb and Google, whatever. And you get a vibe and it's usually correct. If you see something under 50%. It's going to be dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's true. Because yeah. people who write in and give a shit review really had a fucking Really time. passionate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's actually... <laughs> Supremacist. I feel, I feel if you're around like 70, it could go either way. Because some people might like it, but it still could be shit. But if you're in the like high 90s, yeah. like you're going to... It's going to be good. I, I'm, I'd say to say. Yeah. Realistically, like not even as a joke... If all the girls you've ever slept with reviewed you, oh. what would you be? Out of 100%, like like movies, Rotten Tomatoes. As a person or just in the bedroom? I think that'd be two categories. It'd be mm. as a person and in the bedroom. Both very low. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was next? I think, um, you'd, I think you'd be 
fifty percent for both. Thanks. You'd have to think you'd be passable. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Just watching from what I gathered from, from watching, what, watching, from watching the watching performance. performance from watching him. Yeah, the cupboard. yeah. <laughs> yeah. We do cupboard swap sometimes. <laughs> Think about that back home, guys. Why are you listening to this? Think about everyone you've ever slept with. What would they rate you? you? What would they mm. review you? Rate you in the bedroom and mm. as a person. Mm. And if it's under fifty percent, step it up. Yes. Step it up. Yeah. Santa's not coming this year. That's yeah. So try again next year. Yeah. Uh, okay. Who is more real, Santa or Jesus? I thought they were the same dude. <laughs> I thought it was just Jesus, really old. <laughs> that, that, just Jesus Yo, in that is a good oh, point. Yeah. Is it? Maybe. Is it? What if Jesus never died? Yo, that's a good conspiracy. Jesus never died. He just became Santa. He became Santa. Mm. That would make a lot of sense. Now, that's something I can get behind. I, the think, North, I, am, I think I am religious. Okay, the North Pole. I think It's I am just religious. the cross, but the sides fell off. Too far. Okay, moving on. <laughs> Doesn't make sense to me. I'm just trying to relate that's, the two. That'll just be a, a straight stick. What do Isn't you mean? that what the North Pole is? Is of, there a pole? It's, it's I think there is a pole. Oh, <laughs> I'm just thinking an actual pole. It's just an area. I'm, I think, Tom. I think there's a pole in I the Santa. In, in the Santa tail, it's a pole. Oh, okay. I thought I was just thinking the area of the north. Yeah. So I think most people. You're thinking Maybe a literal a pole. pole. I'm thinking of a literal pole, <laughs> and he carries it around with him, or it always stays in the. I think he dances spot. around it for change. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is that is cooked. the most literal you've ever been. That's mm. great. You're probably you're probably right. There is probably a pole in the ground in the North Pole. It's still the area is still called the North Pole. I think. Let's I don't know. That. I don't know. Let's I'm not move on. Expert. expert. We'll find out. There'll be a lot of Christmas movies. I'm sure we'll uh, uh. we'll do our research. Uh, also from OG Tom asks, what are our your thoughts on uh, YouTube removing the dislike button? I haven't even noticed until I re- wrote that comment down. No, nah, I've seen it. I think it's cowardly. It's fucking pathetic. <laughs> Do you want to explain? <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Your strong stance on this. No, I, I agree. I agree with French. Fucking bullshit. Yeah. yeah. How, especially for like uh, how-to tutorials. Like how yeah, you supposed to know true. if it's a dog shit tutorial If it's a good not. tutorial or not. True. It's like really in, informative. It's exactly like you say with the reviews. You base everything, whether you want to eat on a good reviews, mm-hmm. whether you want to watch something on good reviews, YouTube's True. the same. That's the review. Dragon That's the review. You can't... Because you've got no concept of how many people like this sort of style of video. Because more subscribe, Different subscribers like more than others. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Someone could have 20,000 subscribers. Another channel, 20,000 subscribers. Some will just be like little kids who like things a lot. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And some will be like... My fans who don't like things as much as they should. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's true. It is annoying. Do you reckon they're about to bring out another YouTube rewind? And they're oh, just preempting? Because yeah. remember when theirs got oh, yeah, fucking thumbed down so hard? But you should be able to have the choice. Like, why can't you not say, okay, now you have the options to turn dislikes off? Or mm-hmm. your channel, you can turn dislikes on if you're not scared because you make good content. Yeah. How can you know, like... It's exactly what you say. Yeah, rating systems. Yeah, because you're look. You're not looking at amount of likes or dislikes. You're looking at ratio, really, for how many people have seen and, it. And mm-hmm. you can also branch down to comments, see what people. Yeah, are thinking. Oh, I love the comments. Yeah. Oh, internet comments are so fucking funny. Sometimes. Yeah, bro. There's a lot of edgy. Unless comments. it's like on Facebook and you're reading people's like thoughts. And you're like, fuck. The arguments, anti vax arguments on oh. Facebook. Anything comments political, are the best if you go into ever. anything it's political, the best shit ever. you'll be like, I wish I wasn't on here. <laughs> oh. I told did I I told you the story at the NFL game I did about the the dude talking about the lockdown. Mm. Okay, good. I think so. That was that was when it got political quick. Oh shit. Yeah. Eject. Um <laughs> we got mm, Mickey W two thirty uh, asks Frenchie, be honest. If you had to play play basketball with Lewis Spears, who do you think would win? I'd smoke him, hundred percent. Does Lewis play basketball? Nah, he's just taller he's than just me. Tall. He's taller than me, but I'm quite a. Uh, I'm good at ball sports, guys. Mm. We've we've established I'm not a bike rider. Mm-hmm. I'm not good at uh, balance sports, ball sports. I'll, I'll Lewis crush Lewis Spears him. been posting a lot of swimming content. <laughs> so he probably beat you at swimming. I think he'd beat me at swimming if you want to mm. call that a sport, more of a survival skill. I don't <laughs> include that in the list of sports. But you have a lot of baths. 
I do have a lot of bars. So, so if it's a bathing sport, we mm. must, if you want. Yeah. I guess a pool's just a really big bath, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. So, so I'd be all right at you that. You might have hours up on him. Me and Moaning Myrtle would be unlocking all the egg secrets. Ooh. Yeah, if I was in Harry Potter, I would be in that bathroom having the bath all the time. <laughs> Do they have baths in the common room? I don't think you so. You never get no. to see their toilets, eh? Hey? Do they have urinals in Harry Potter? Yeah. I, th- I think they had toilets because, um, yeah, there was like the the thing where he went down to get the snake, but that was like the sink mm. opened uh, up. He's just pissing the sink. Literally like watched it yesterday. Nice. Literally watched it. Oh, and it. you're making me watch Succession and you're going to watch Harry Potter? Yeah, Succession's better. <laughs> it's not. Okay, let's have a vote. What's better, Succession or Harry Potter? I just voted. Put it in the comments. Put it in the comments. <laughs> Put it in the comments. <laughs> you have already lost that and you know yeah. it. I mean, it didn't it's age not that well. better. Who didn't age that well? First Harry Potter. I watched the first two and I was like, yeah. Oh, you mean the movies didn't age yeah, well? Yeah. I thought you meant the actors. <laughs> <laughs> what? Draco Malfoy didn't age well. Yeah, a few of them. Yeah. Mm. What's yeah. up with Draco? I haven't seen him. I just lost his hair real quick. Well, you should have something in common. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you just got <laughs> He's a very hairy dude. If you don't know Alex is a very hairy dude, there's not a lot I can come back about. His fucking blanket on his head. Oh, no. I've got Love a perfectly it. trimmed beard. Fuck off. <laughs> Okay, moving on. He's really feeling at home now, isn't he? I love it. I love it. <laughs> All right, thank you for my last podcast. <laughs> um, we've got Angus Lee. I'll good. let off the detonator soon. Don't worry, it's in his ass. <laughs> Angus Leal, uh, ethical dilemma. Can vegans swallow jizz? That's a good question. Oh, wow. I was thinking about this. Do they eat caviar? Because that's F- kind of the same thing, eggs. right? Fish eggs. No, they wouldn't. Because this is technically human eggs. Yeah, you're not wrong here. So if they can't have that. So vegans can't have any animal product. Product. Fucking and, hell. And I guess it's kind of like people. It's not much being, of a life, is it? <laughs> but it's like people <laughs> being against like abortions. It's kind of. You could see sperm as babies because that's how they picture it. The anti abortion people, they're like, those are babies. Yeah. I don't know. So you're saying that's. So I'm just wondering if that that's an. If they see cum as babies, then they shouldn't eat it. Interesting. What do you think? It's blowing my mind a bit. I don't, I don't, I don't really know how to. How You're to still feel. on the head. I'm trying to think about what vegans are allowed to eat because I'm like most things are from animals, aren't they? I don't really think about it often. They don't eat much. No, they can Just eat like, any plants. Oh, okay. They can eat grains. Fuck, so do they go to the botanical... They can't eat do, eggs, they do can't vegan, eat cheese. Do vegans go to the botanical gardens and just like froth out? Like, yeah. someone's hungry. They go there to eat. munch on yeah. <laughs> roses and That's shit. a buffet for them. <laughs> <laughs> no, they get like fake meat and stuff like tofu yeah. and shit. Yeah, eh? tofu. One of us is going to become vegan. I'm looking at Alex. Alex, are you vegan? Maybe. Enough time in the inner world. Are you vegan? Might. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Mm, I can see <laughs> you doing it. You've got the look. Yeah. I don't care enough it's about that good. stuff. I can see why you wouldn't eat some animals because some animals like provide a, a purpose and are cute. But then some is just like, you want to be eaten. Your life sucks. Mm. Like chickens. They don't know what's happening. They're just bark, 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 waiting for someone to come eat them. Mm. They, they, they live to get eaten, I think. Yeah. I saw this, it's chicken run, and they're like, oh, the quicker we escape, the quicker we can serve our purpose and fulfill our master's bellies. Was that the They were escaping messaging? to the oven, yes. Oh, yeah, that was um, funded by KFC, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, Michael West 08 asks, uh, where did the roundabout crew name come from? Yeah, so basically... I an, can answer okay, this one. Okay, <laughs> probably best suited to answer, you're right. There was a bomb in... <laughs> In a car. <laughs> Tom, Kenny, and Elliot are driving the car. They can only turn left. <laughs> yep, yep. And they're like, hell, we can't just turn left forever. Roundabout was coming up. Fortunately, they got on the roundabout. Yep. Just kept turning left till someone could defuse the bomb. Then I was like, you should call us the roundabout crew because <laughs> we defused that bomb. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually, we did our first video, Shit Nobody Says in Canberra, and it was like big in Canberra. And some guy who's like the head of a radio station called us up and was like, do you want a radio show? 
and we came in and did some tests and he was like yeah you need a name and all our names were like really not pc like the reach around boys and like the reach around boys <laughs> we're just like making That's up way stu- better. stupid names but it's not radio friendly uh. and we we're like we're from canberra we got known for a canberra video the roundabout crew so it's a really lame but what but channel was it on initially then what channel? What was your YouTube channel called that you put it on? Tom Armstrong. Oh, and then you changed the name of that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So yeah. it's my channel. Always. Yeah, well, Canberra does have a lot of roundabouts apparently, guys. It was but like- yeah, it was funny. Then we did a radio show for literally six months. Um, two of us were based in Sydney. Two, Elliot and Kenny were still in Canberra. And we'd link up with headphones. So we couldn't, we weren't in the same room. But it was getting broadcast on like the Today Network in Canberra on Sunday wow. nights. And we were just like... No one was monitoring what we were doing, really. We had one guy who was, like, mixing it, but he didn't really give a shit. But, like, no one was listening to our show, so we were just talking shit. And then it was actually going to air every week. And then someone finally realized we were still on air, and they were like, let's cut this shit. (laughs) But in another, like, life, you would be a radio host right now. Because if you guys had got the right producer, I think that could have been a really successful show. Yeah. I think that's the hard part is when you come up, you need guidance from someone in the industry who can who can and sort they of show you the steps we weren't getting paid or anything like if they actually worked to advance tried. us and tried and gave yeah. us feedback we could have been good that's a weird part about it it's the same like sport and any entertainment industry sometimes they're like you guys are going to be the ones we're going to make sure we advance you like music especially like triple yeah. j we're like no nah, you're our act we're going to make sure we get the right people in front of you that are you're going to take the right steps for your career and your releases and stuff like that. And sometimes you just got to let um, Harvey Weinstein fuck you. <laughs> and that's all it is. <laughs> what if we're Australian and he's not here? Skype. <laughs> Skype. I was thinking of an Australian alternative like Gina Reinhart. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. Um, we've got a question from... Oh, uh, Michael West has a second question. Uh, how does Tom get all these brand deals? It's a good question. Um, so there's this guy called Harvey Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. No, nah, there's heaps of websites for like influencers. You can see briefs and all this shit. You just got to do a lot of fishing. Um, for oh, so a lot you of apply to a lot of them. Yeah, I, I manage myself. Nice work, bro. Thanks, man. And it also, I look at... okay. I look at brand deals like I would prostitution, okay? <laughs> no, so there's some uh, prostitutes that they don't really want that many clients. Clients will come to get them. They'll get DM. They'll be like, yo, 10000 for a night. Not really prostitutes. And these are the people who only do a couple of brand deals. Some will do anyone. Anyone. They want that money. They don't care if it's a $10 fee, mm-hmm. $10 cock, whatever. They'll be out on the street corners saying, come on, come on, pay me and I'll do whatever you want. Yep. That's you That's me. in terms of brand deals. <laughs> I think brands just know you'll promote anything and do a good job. I think you're wrong because I put in work and I am not- I'm not a, saying you don't put in work, but I'm, I'm not saying scared to you approach. will promote- Exactly. But you've got- you're not an, scared I, to think, I think your problem is actually ego-based. You're like, people have to come to me because I'm Frenchy no. <laughs> and you don't reach out and you don't respond to emails. I don't respond to emails, definitely. No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not saying comparing the two. I'm not saying I'm the first one. <laughs> yes, you are. No, no, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. <laughs> Which one are you then? David Dobrik's the first one. He only does it with like Tesla and stuff. But I'm, just, I'm, I haven't done thing. which prostitute I am yet, okay? Okay. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> Which one would I be then? You're the one that everyone knows has AIDS <laughs> And it's a risk to be associated with yeah, you Yeah, that's good, yeah, that's yeah. good But if you don't get it It can be quite rewarding Yeah, if you get the right condom Yes And you're protected from the AIDS Yes hmm. There you go Yeah, no, brand deals Tom's really good at getting all the brand deals I, th- I think It's just, yeah work no but i've realized what you want to do with brand deals is just get the ones you like and it's not really uh selling out as long as you, you it's something you enjoy product you enjoy and that's why we are proud to say we're sponsored by erection dysfunction pills guys mm. and <laughs> and penis enlargement pump. that's right get your get manscaped it to, get it today <laughs> uh tyson clark asks has big french ever complained before 
for free food? If so, what happened? So kind of Karen moment. Is that me? Yeah. yeah. You're no, big, big you're French. big French. No, 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 no. I'm like not. Uh, I never complain. Even if they, if if I let's say hypothetically, I'm at um a pub and I order a schnitzel and they bring me out the Toowoomba salmon. Yep. I'm like, okay, I guess I ordered the salmon. I'll just eat it. I don't know if I believe you. I don't complain about food. I once, okay, I you once. You complain a lot. No, I did once. I remember it. I was come back from the farm <laughs> with my old man. We went and stopped and got a pie at the best pie shop ever in Jaroa. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's changed hands now. So the pies aren't as good. Don't go there. Um, I took a bite into it. Had a couple bites. And I'm like, oh, fuck. There's a big hair in there. Like an Alex oh. style hair. <laughs> like thick brownie. I'm not going to yeah. lie. I had a couple bites around it. Oh. <sighs> Because I knew what I was going to do. And I come, took it back. I'm like, sorry, there's a hair in there. It's like, no worries. Do you want another pie or your money back? Oh, I'll just have another pie. So I got a pie and a half for the price of a pie. It's fucking sick. I remember me and my dad once got pies and it was like there's some kind of gelatinous substance they put in there to mix the meat in mm. that gives it that gravy, sh- like, you know, that yeah, kind of- whale. Whale, whale but blubber. they hadn't mix, like mixed it or something. So it was just like it looked like our pie was filled with Vaseline. Ooh. Like it was fucking repulsive. That's like, bro, that's like a rarity. Is that good? Yeah, you get to go to Willy Wonka's factory if you get the Vaseline pie. <laughs> the Vaseline factory. Another <laughs> another bad food thing. Um, my mum brought home some lamingtons when I was like 16 from the markets. I fucking, I thought I like chipped my tooth, right? <laughs> Because I was like, what the fuck is that? There was a rusty nail. <laughs> and I, no one did anything about it. I was like, mom, there's a fucking rusty nail in there. She was like, oh, you found it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you won. Like, you get to go to the rusty <laughs> nail factory now. Willy like, Wonka's like, rusty nail factory. I feel like that's like a lawsuit that I could have got some bunnies. money, but I got nothing. I just chipped my tooth. Because from the markets, bro. Who are you yeah. going to sue? They're like, like an old Angie down the market. Yeah, exactly. Fuck a rusty nail That could have been How does a rusty dangerous. nail Get in the lamington mix She's fucking mixing it On some old table <laughs> I don't know <laughs> It was fucked Yeah that's fucked Yeah There we go Um, No I know I don't really complain About food Oh Orange juice If you give me fucking Orange juice is not fresh I'm I feel like you now. Are a big complainer I'm not Tell me when Tell me one time You've had a lot of Cafe experiences with me Well There was this certain Uber driver <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you're not Opposed to a I was right complaint. I literally rung up The professionals And said can we go On an Uber And she's saying You're not allowed Law Legally I can't take them Like legally You can I will I, will, I said, I will sue you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I will slash your fucking tires. It's a bit of a Karen moment. I will, <laughs> I will like take a- off your wheels like you took off your eyebrows. <laughs> 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 fucking tattoo. Oh, all right, what's next? Uh, we're going to the conundrum of the week. Yeah. Tom and French's conundrum of the week. Thanks, Ooh. David. Cheers, mate. So um, I went on to... Uh, Am I the arsehole? Yes. On Reddit. On yeah. Reddit. Because you went into Reddit relationships and you got too sad. It's way too sad. <laughs> yeah, you really have to fish through those. It's like, it's all just someone fucked there. Cheating, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so set, but send us in if you've got any problems, any kind of conundrum, am I the arsehole things. Like that first one we got was perfect yeah, about perfect. the boyfriend with the smelly cock or smelly whatever. Smelly cock. Send it in because the next then, one. Cause then we can call up or ask... Follow ups. Send it as updates. a voicemail, yeah. dude. Actually, we got some voicemails in the Discord. Let's not didn't complicate we? it. Let's okay, stick let's with go. what we're doing. Right, next week. Next week. Next okay. week, we'll read those voicemails. So, my husband has recently recently got interested in coffee as a hobby. He began spending all his free time scouring coffee forums looking for tips, and has recently ordered his own plants. I'm glad he found something fulfilling in his life for <laughs> once. Oh my god! That is not the issue. The issue is that it has gone to the point he has started policing my language. I say <laughs> espresso like espresso. Oh. English is not my mother tongue and it's just easier to say it that way. He insists I work on it to say it the right way. I have no desire to do this and told him so. He now says he feels attacked by my words, but I just feel attacked by his. Am I the asshole? You just <laughs> need a divorce. You need a divorce. Bro, he sounds like the worst type of person. Oh, wow. Bro. So one thing being a coffee wanker mm. and then being a, a word wanker as well. Like, bro, I, that's funny. The only thing she can do now is mispronounce 
as many words as possible. Yeah, I feel and like... Then, yeah. And then never admit to it. Say, oh, I didn't realise I was doing it. And yeah. then just com- mispronounce it again. Yeah. So was it espresso? How are you supposed to say it? Espresso. S. It's not an X. There is an X there though, isn't no. it? Oh. So French is <laughs> saying wrong forever. My husband is going to be angry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like this type of energy of a person, I'm sure it, it he does it for a lot more than just this coffee. Like the high horse vibe mm. of thinking he's better than people. I feel like it's going to, yeah. It's, it's called a latte, not a latte. Mm. Which one is it? Latte or latte? <laughs> 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 if me and Tom were married, you'd get so mad about the way we I wouldn't be married. Uh, we could get married. <laughs> See, I think it's interesting. The laws have changed. Tom. Taking her side, her side. I'm actually on the bloke side, oh. mainly because of the way she's worded it. He's found something fulfilling for once in his yeah, life. Yeah, that was and then aggressive. He's just like he's he's got his hobby now. He's going really into it, and he's like, actually, it's espresso. It's yeah, not true. Espresso. And she's like, I'm not saying it no. espresso, then I'm going to say it's espresso. But she's not, doesn't speak English. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> she, she wrote Where's Go she back from? where you Where's came she from? from. What's her name? It's Didn't. not her mother tongue, she said. Well, it's obvious they need a divorce. That's the yeah. first step. Um, <laughs> if not, I guess a little. You'd be the worst marriage murder. counselor. A little murder. Murder. Whoever murders who first. You got to get life insurance first. Nah, then they know you did it. But it so doesn't you, matter. The trick is you get. Give up your life experience, experience, insurance. Which one am I trying to say? Insurance. You give up your life insurance, then you murder them the day after. And be like, oh, I let the payment lapse. Obviously, I didn't do it. Otherwise, I would have, like, if I murdered them. But then you're not getting much out of it. Well, you get to murder them. <laughs> <laughs> you get the joy of hearing never, their heart stop beating. Yeah, you never get to hear them say espresso again. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm on, I'm on board. That was a little harsh the joy for once in his lifeline. <laughs> yeah. It's like, maybe you should be giving him joy. I think there's more issues if he's like really into coffee. Do you reckon he's fucking the percolator? <laughs> <laughs> I reckon he might be. <laughs> Grinding down the beans. <laughs> fucking the shit out Perkiest of him. Perkiest thing I've oh, seen. <laughs> it's like, I'll perk you later. That should be the name of a coffee, <laughs> coffee shop. Perk you later. Perk you later. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Coffee sure. porn. That's yeah. good. Coffee porn. Like coffee based porn. No, I can see uh, both sides and mostly it's his fault. No, nah, don't be like that guy. Just like... Both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he also should be You know he's guy. doing it in public too. Yeah. And oh, he's look kind at, of... Everyone, look how my wife pronounces espresso. <laughs> I want it fast in an express. <laughs> express packaging. Espresso, you fucking moron. <laughs> She's from another country. Dum, 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 dum. Dum, 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 dum. <laughs> Say this next one. It's chowder, Frenchy. <laughs> chowder. Uh, uh, opening some mail? Yeah, yes. let's do it. Let's uh, open this package. Put Tom on. and Frenchy's fucked segment of the week. So for this week, we've decided uh, to finally check our mailbox. Oh, we know these guys. This is from Love Patreon's Pigeon Sherm. Do you remember yes, them? Pidge and Sherm. They, they're in the Discord. They're in the Discord. Let's go. Okay. So it's a really long cardboard box for those just listening. First, oh, wait, Tom. First, we got a hat. Oh. It says, make tacos, not war. That's a good hat. Is this just a, just a random? That's just a nice hat. Nice Corona hat. Sick. There it's we shotgun. go. Oh. <laughs> you gave it to me. Well, it had a flat brim. We'll so see what? how big my head is. Cause and then we've got a shark. <laughs> That's uh, yours. Is that a hat? I think it's a hat. <laughs> Put it on. <laughs> oh, but then you'll see my Draco Malfoy hair. Oh, there we go. Nice flat brim. And then Frenchie's putting on his hat. I don't think it's a hat. I think it's a hat, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. So you Looks get- like you're getting eaten by a shark. Um, and then Alex gets a sticky hand. Oh, that's <laughs> Just cool. as good. Alex, you should try and see if you can bitch slap us from there for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> This is like just a lot of wow. presents. I'm, oh, a music I'm assuming box. there's a card we'll find at some point. All right, point. let's see what song we've got on the music box. Oh, there's box. another sticky hand. All right, give him two sticky hands. He's going to try and bitch slap us the rest of the show. Oh, he gets two. Okay. Yeah. All right, yeah. let's see what song. And there's song. another one. You can have All a sticky right, hand. There's actually, a, I think it's only sticky hands. This is great. <laughs> Tamagotchi. That's sick. <laughs> That's sick, shotgun. 
It's a happy birthday. Is that what's going on? Wow, this is insane. They've just bought us a bunch of presents. And a lot of sticky hands. They must have been free. All right, that's cool. We got a happy birthday thing. It, it does feel like my birthday. Oh, oh emu, emu hat. No, Let me you got oh, okay, I'll go back to Shah. Well, because of the emu, well, I need it. I need the emu. Should we wear these on our show? Um, <laughs> Stand-up shows. Hamilton Island hat for Alex. That's pretty cool. We let's got a Christmas see, hat. For your big head. Is this for the dog? It's small. Oh, chicken key ring. That's a small I'm not sound. sure how this is to listen to, guys, so I don't have my headphones on. Hey, Rufus, do you need a hat? <laughs> Who wants to build your own kaleidoscope? <laughs> There's so many gifts. This is literally more than I get for my actual birthday. Instant snow powder. That oh, seems like drugs. Coke, yeah. Oh, I've <laughs> actually got to build this. That's kind of cool. Alex, I feel like this would be good for your ketamine party. You can build a kaleidoscope. <laughs> that's that's awesome. I don't think there's a card in there, but thank you anyway. All right, should we try and... Um, do you want to have a slap war? Yes. Um, we should probably should do something good for our audio listeners too, Tom. Slap war is good. I don't think that is too good for our... Um, yeah. Says the loser who's about to get slapped. <laughs> So thank you, Pigeon Sherm. Is that how you say it? They told me the origin of that name, but I instantly forgot. Um, yeah, right. any more packages with our P.O. box is in the description. It's P.O. box 913, Darlinghurst, New South Wales, 1300. Um, we will do one more final it's opening really before sticky. Christmas. Ah! ah, fuck off. Fuck off, Tom. Fuck off. Don't slap me. No. Ooh, that was cool. That was like a high five. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys i think that's been a pretty good episode i feel like we covered a lot yeah we covered a lot um cricket starting guys on thursday the ashes no one cares about okay. that <laughs> okay okay it's gonna be, it's you gonna really be, got defeated you could have you could have oh yeah back. we're doing a sydney show on thursday that's all we're doing yeah um, sydney show along. thursday Morgan, Albury, Albury, Friday. newcastle and Mullingong. fuck yeah capital tickets left bar guys come in french you'll sign your titties yeah and your nipples mm. and your back back whatever you back give fat. me we'll sign get Tom to sign something weird too guys uh, don't leave him out of it I'm good <laughs> okay see ya see ya we really got distracted oh there's an egg in it